What's going on people? I have work tomorrow. I wasn't even going to put up a video today, but I got a ton of emails of people asking me to talk about the 3DS price cut and what I thought of it. So here you go. Here is my take on the 3DS price cut. So in case you don't know, Nintendo's financial statement was slashed. Their full year profit forecast was slashed. That's a major blow. A big chunk of that had to do with disappointing 3DS sales. They expected the system to sell like hotcakes like the original DS did. It sure as hell didn't. And here's my take as to why. I kind of said this before, um, but I'm going to bring it home with this video. The first reason the 3DS didn't sell is simple. The economy globally still sucks. There are tons of people still unemployed. There are people who can't even get jobs at gas stations who have four-year college degrees. I know a lot of them personally. The last thing on people's minds right now, even for their children, is to go out and buy them a portable gaming console. People, at least in the United States right now, can barely keep their lights on, let alone go out and buy a 3DS. So to be honest, especially with how well the DS was doing, Nintendo picked the absolute worst time to launch a portable console because no one is in a financial position to pick the system up right now. The second reason the 3DS is not doing well, even though it's remedied now, or as of August 12th it will be remedied, is that what were they thinking launching the thing for $250? Even if there wasn't a recession right now, that price is astronomical for a dedicated portable gaming console. Especially when Nintendo knows the reason that people got the DS was because it was a great casual system. And what casual means is that people aren't diehard about gaming. And if people aren't diehard about gaming, those same casual players who bought a DS are not going to spend $250 on the 3DS. Nintendo, you knew that too. The third reason is that there wasn't any must-have games. I mean, come on, you launch a dedicated portable gaming console that goes for a pretty high price and you don't have any software with it? The only game that caught my eye when the system launched was a Street Fighter 4 game. The rest of the games just looked really gimmicky. So put that into perspective. There's a major recession. You launch a new portable gaming system at a very high price. And on top of it, you don't release any must-have titles with the system. Of course the thing is not going to sell. And last but not least, the fourth and main reason the 3DS is not selling well is because smartphones are now very affordable, very powerful, and have changed the whole portable gaming market. Icy Rhythms just released a video about this topic too. I'll have his video in the description below. And if you watch the video, I have to say that I totally agree with him. I really think that this will be the last generation that Sony and Nintendo release dedicated portable gaming consoles. I really think the 3DS and the PS Vita will be the last dedicated portable gaming systems that will be released by major hardware developers. Now, I could already see that people are going to freak out that I'm saying this. I've said it before and people literally have verbally attacked me. But you have to understand how much times have changed. When the original DS was released, Yes, there were very basic smartphones back then. Nokia had one, they had the N-Gage. Other companies were starting to come out with Windows smartphones, but those phones were not capable of doing gaming on the same level the DS was at the time. Even with the release of the original iPhone and how successful that was, it wasn't really until 2008 when the Android operating system came out and was released with the T-Mobile G1 that smartphones started to become affordable and become mainstream. And it hasn't really been until the last like year and a half, two years, that smartphones have really blown up and taken over the mainstream market. Now you can go out and buy a smartphone for $100, $150 with Android OS on it and have it play all different kinds of casual games. And if you look at financial reports and stories about the original DS, that was its biggest selling point was the casual games. Yes, it has tons of hardcore games, the original DS, but what made it sell were those quick pick up and play casual games. And now because cell phones are capable of playing similar kinds of games for literally pennies to the dollar, you can get games for two or three bucks on Android and iOS phones. It has severely crippled the dedicated gaming market. And honestly, I don't think there's any going back. I don't think that Nintendo and Sony can gain back the market share 
from the smartphone market. They can't do it. And now I know I'm going to hear from people, well, I hate just using those motion controls. And I hate, you know, there's no joystick or thumb pad. It's, there's no real controls on it. It's not a real gaming experience. Rich, why are you saying this to me? I want my real games on the go. I want to play Uncharted on a bus and on a plane and on a train. That's fine. That's great that you do. But unfortunately, there's a very big part of the consumer base that doesn't. A lot of people just want to play those games at home, and when they're out on the road, they want to play Angry Birds. Also, on top of it, too, look at that Sony Ericsson phone that was just released, that Android phone, that when you flip it up, it has real PlayStation controls on it. Granted, I hear the two analog thumb pads that they're using are kind of buggy, but that's just one phone. Do you think that's going to be the last phone they try to do that with? Hell no. And making phones with actual game pads on them will alleviate the whole just using touch and motion thing that people hate. The other thing I hear about the smartphones too is they're not as powerful as the portable gaming consoles. Really? Are you kidding me? They definitely have the power under the hood now to do the same games the 3DS is doing. Dual core processors, the NVIDIA Tegra graphics chip, and they're only going to get more powerful. They definitely can give you a full gaming experience, especially if they introduce the gamepad with these new Android phones. So there you go, folks. Uh, watch Icy Rhythm's video because I agree with them 110%. That's why I keep talking about it. And unfortunately, welcome to the future. Maybe Sony and Nintendo with their next generation, after the current generation portable consoles, will release an Android cell phone hybrid gaming console. But this will be the last dedicated portable gaming consoles that we will see. I could be wrong, but I highly doubt that I am. I really think that this is the end of the road for Nintendo and Sony when it comes to portable gaming. So anyway, leave your thoughts and your venom below in the comment section. I'll be back Tuesday with my Fear 1 talk and play, and then finally, I know Ryan from Stone Age Gamer is going to be happy about this, I'm going to review the Gopher, the portable Genesis gaming system that lets you use SD cards inside of it. It's going to be really interesting to see the reaction from people on that one, because uh, I don't even want to go there now. Anyway guys, enjoy your weekend. I will see you Tuesday with my Fear 1 review. Have a good one.